five every day. Three forty five. Yeah. And I pray in tongues before I my feet hit the floor. I, I am spirit filled, you know. Hey Amen. I, I, I can't help it. it. It's real. You know, I didn't believe it, but it's real. You know, God showed it to me. It's real. And when I pray in the spirit, God opens doors for me. Because sometimes I don't know how to pray. You know, I, I just don't. I don't. You know, I'm not going to sit in here and just blabber all kinds of crazy things off because I don't know what he told me to do. You know, praying in the Spirit edifies us, and that's what we need. Because that's the Spirit. God said he'd leave what behind? The Holy Spirit, right? Amen? Okay, he wants us to use the Holy Spirit to do what? To intercede as a helper. Because He carries that. When, when we pray, the Holy Spirit's praying through us. So it breaks through the barriers. Because the devil can't understand that language. Amen? Yeah. I'm sorry, but he, He's not fluent in the Holy Ghost. You know, I hate it for Him, but He's just not. And He never will be. The devil's always been a maggot and a loser. And a liar. And He never will be nothing else. So as you go out through this week, I want you to meditate on these things, these scriptures that I told you that Second Chronicles. I want you, I want you to get up and say that prayer in a moment of time. Confess good things over your household. Confess good things over Daniel's business that he's fixing to have. Confess good things on it. When you walk through that place in the morning, people are praying and turning and pacing back and forth from one end of it to the other, blessing that place in the name of Jesus. We're going to have a better day today than we had yesterday. And just keep praying, and keep praying, and keep praying, and keep praying. Bless my wife's heart, and her health's going to get better whether she likes it or not. You see what I mean? Some people have been sick so long, they've become accustomed to it. You know, and God just now showed me that. Isn't that crazy? God just now showed me that, that my wife is accustomed. She's been sick so long, she's accustomed to buying into diseases and the sickness that, that the devil has convinced her she has. I can pray them away. Amen. I can. In a minute. I can. But I can ask God to and He will do it. But if her mouth, if she keeps confessing sickness and disease, her body is going to stay sick. I didn't even plan on going here. I don't know why this happened, but I'm going to do it anyway. Her body will, will do that. Okay, we have people in these nursing homes, and, and we know people. Every one of us knows someone that struggles with uh, some type of uh, prescription pill addiction. We all all know that. That's all right, right? It's not. I'd say it. Lord Tabs and Xanax is the worst. Uh, every person in 65% of America's women are on Lord Tabs, Xanax. Valium, something like that. They're all on Vicodin. It's a huge thing. It's a, it's a problem. Well, it's just a headache pill. That's what got me started back. I've been clean for three years. One other time, I started taking the Vicodin for the headaches. I was having real bad headaches. Instead of praying away, I knew what to do, but I didn't do it. See, I wasn't relying on the Holy Ghost. You know, because God was telling me I needed more prayer time. I needed more prayer time. Less work, more prayer time. I was only working about 100 hours a week then. You know, I worked 84 hours a week when I worked out of town. But I'm still able to read my Bible and pray. So he keeps me in this If there's someone in here today, right now, that if you're, if you're having struggles in your life, if you're struggling with anything, and I don't care what it is, and you want it broke off of you, if you've got a family member that's sick, or if it's in addiction and you want it broke, come up, come up here. And right now, we'll lay hands on you and, and, and God, God will manifest in that situation. Sometimes you need more than one person to come together with you in prayer and believe that God's going to do what He says He's going to do. You know, see, I'm lucky. Let me rephrase that. I'm blessed that I've been put in these people right here. I've been partnered up with these people that are in this room. I'm blessed that I've been put in these people here because they're all believers. 
true blood bought children the most high God and they believe that the word works. That's the key. You know, you can go to a lot of churches that they don't they don't I mean they read the word, yeah, but they don't believe it works for them. Amen. They just don't. They believe it works for you, but they're not sure it works for them, and that's sad. We have to believe that God's word's gonna work for us. And work every time for us. That's pretty much all I have for today without going into another another section of this deal, but I, I do want to come back the next time and, and I, I want to give you some more things about grace, about God's grace and His love and how it brings purity to your life and how it brings obedience to your life. Uh, because I didn't have all those things. I was a, a how would they put it, a, a ground-pounding Pentecostal. And, and I and I, and I one way and one way only, if you didn't read the, read the King James Bible, you were going to hell and everything else. I just, that's, but that, that's the way I was taught. You know, I believe that. That King James Bible is the only Bible. There ain't no other Bible good enough. I'm for, if whatever Bible you read, you're getting it, then keep reading it. Amen? Because it's God's Word. That's the way it is. I love the King James Bible. Love it. But it, sometimes it's too much for me. I don't have the ability to discern it as fast as I would like to discern. So I can read my little NIV here and, and then go back to King James and say, oh yeah, that's what that meant. You see what I mean? How the Holy Spirit works? And he would have given it to me in the other one because I was obedient. Well, I mean, I was obedient, but I was obedient for all the wrong reasons. I was obedient because of fear, you know, instead of love. You know, because the commandments, the Ten Commandments were wiped out when Christ went to the cross. Love is His commandment. Love, but no other God performs. And that's what I want to leave you guys with, is love. I, I, I want to instill this in you guys, is love. Christ's love is what brings, draws people to you. You know, people know that I'm different. I, they know I'm different immediately. I, I can go into a room full of nothing but sinners, and they know I'm different. Within five minutes, they know I don't cuss right off the bat. And there are said words that I hadn't heard in 20 years. Horrible. They didn't even say cuss that bad in prison. So they knew I was different. So they tried to curb their mouths. But not because of anything I said, but because they knew I was different. You know, I kept my job, but they would have fired anybody else that went down the first day. Now, they would have let them go. But they didn't let me go because God. Not, not me, because God. It's the God in me. So I want to leave you guys with that today. And when I come back in, in two weeks, I will share some, some more stuff uh, into the things that the good gifts of God that God has for us. You know, uh, uh, we operate a lot of times, but uh, sometimes I think we don't, we don't we're not using it, all the power that God gives us. You know, we need it to, get, to fight the enemy in today's world. You need all the power that God has, you know. And I, I, uh, if a man has a wife and she's a Christian, he has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. I mean, a wonderful, wonderful man. If you're married in here and your wife is a Christian and she's serving God, God has given you. A wonderful, wonderful thing to cherish and love and be obedient to and study the Word with. Because if you don't have that and you're struggling every day to get that, you've got to rely on these things that I've talked about today. Grace. Grace. Because without that grace, I've never made it. I've been married 20 years to the same woman, and I love her to death. But she thinks she knows God, and man, I don't believe for one minute. Right now, if she died, she would have. Not the one minute. She thinks she did, but I don't think she did. <clears throat> That's just me. So I have to treat this with grace, you know, and love. You know, because there has to be change in order for salvation to be there. It has to be change. Has to be. I can't find it anywhere in my Bible that it says different. 
I mean, you could twist it around, maybe make it say it's different, but it ain't going to say it. It has to be changed. You know? And I don't want that for anybody that's out there watching today. If you're watching out there today, I want you to know that when you do turn your life over to Christ, instantly, that quick, your spirit man's changed, but your fleshly man ain't. He's still just boiling on fire. So it's kind of like a snake skin. You have to tear it off one layer at a time. And as you take one layer off at a time, come on up here, Pastor. As you take one layer of that snake skin off at a time, God will open your eyes a little bit more. And He'll take another layer off. Because if God just completely manifested Himself over and fixed the flesh and the spirit, man, you wouldn't even know what to do. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't take it. It'd be too much. And He knows that. Because He's all doing God. Amen? And God can do whatever He wants to do. But that's the way it works. And I'm going to turn it back over to our pastor here and, and let him uh, talk to you all for a few minutes. And, I just appreciate y'all. Thank you very much. Well, what I would like to do is, uh, Johnny, if you'll, we'll have an invitation yeah. online, and then we'll have one here, and if you'd like to play some music, don't have to sing, but okay. you can play some music that we can have an invitation with. Amen. Uh, Amen. I want to ask that everybody here, with their heads bowed and eyes closed, just let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart right now. Whatever it is that the Lord is laying on your heart with this message, just, uh, just meditate on your heart right now. Let God begin to speak to you as I have prayer with those online that are watching. And then after we have prayer with those online, you're going to have an opportunity if you need to come forward for whatever need that you might have. Uh, maybe God's speaking to you with this message today. Or maybe you've never given your life to the Lord. You want to do that today. Maybe there's something you're struggling with and you want to lay it on the altar today. Or Maybe it's somebody you want to pray for. Whatever need that you have, uh, you'll have an opportunity to come forward and, and pray about that. For all those that are watching online, this hope that Brother Johnny was talking about today, you can have that hope. It starts by saying a prayer of salvation, by, by coming to know Christ. If you never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can do that right now. A simple prayer. And if you'll follow me in this prayer, this simple prayer, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will come into your heart to dwell and you'll become a new creation, a new creature. And you can experience this hope, this love that He's talking about today. So follow me in prayer. Lord, I know that You died for my sin. I know that You arose on the third day. I come to You today. And I ask that you forgive me of my sin. To come into my heart. And to be my personal Savior. Lead and guide me every day of my life. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now if you pray that simple prayer, the Bible says you've been born again. And if you'll contact us, we'll help you find a church in your area. For everybody that